we got 10 story content from Mr. Any News. This is called The Time Rimuru Massacred an Army to Become a True Demon Lord. Wait a minute. This season two shit. Thank you, Cryo, for the five months of Prime. All right, what's this video gonna be? Get into the crux of things, I figured I'd go back and talk about one of the more iconic moments from Tensura. I never did get to do a full cut content for it. <laughs> Season three is so lack of content. And Anon Youth has to literally go back to season two timeline. <laughs> and make, there's nothing about Masa you can talk about? Nothing about the call of sea when it turned really nothing. Damn. Damn. For it, so while season three builds itself up towards what I hope <laughs> is a showdown between Masayuki and Rimuru, yeah. I wanna share with you the true devastating nature of this. I mean, you know, they they are being very faithful. It's not a one-to-one -one adaptation, but the the root cause of everyone's complaints is the such an such a faithful adaptation, including all the fucking meetings that's pissing people off, right? Megido! Megido! There was quite a bit of genius behind how it happened, and the novel goes super in-depth into what Rimuru was doing here. So this was not... It was the... It was like physics. It was straight up magnifying glass, sun, solar ray, laser beam, rather than specific kind of magic attack, right? When I saw this for the first time, I thought it was like Rimuru was like slime, fluid, just like penetrating really fast all over the place, but... It was basically a lens being um, just magnifying and like magnif- like just such a strong light attack onto these and it's not like a regular magic attack, right? Because there was some sort of barrier or some shit that was preventing it? There was even a side story in the manga showing the perspective from one of the soldiers. Kill. An interesting subplot that was far more emotional than you may think. <laughs> yeah, the nature of war. They don't really talk about this too much in Tensura, right? If they went to empathize to a regular family and families that had no choice but to sign up for the war and they had to die, yeah, that, that would be pretty brutal. But Tensura, honestly, doesn't really delve too much into the inner psyches and traumatic experiences like that. It's just more casual fun, right? So, if you're curious to know the full extent of this pivotal moment from Tensura, then stick around as I'll be going through all of it. Before but we first! Get yeah, mm -hmm, what I say. Before we get started, I thought it was gonna be the first. Started though, I got a special sponsor for you today Ooh, with Nikkei and Ava. Oh, Nikkei, this is Evangelion Girls, right? Ava. That's right. Two legendary worlds collide in the latest update for Goddess. This girl looks like a MILF. I don't like her because glasses. This is the Kudere girl, and this is the Sundere girl, right? One of these days, maybe we can watch Evangelion. I hear Nikkei is actually pretty damn good in terms of an actual plot. If you look at the revenue chart for the gacha games too, Nikkei is hanging on there. I really thought this was just a big booby ass-shaking game, but apparently it gets super sweaty, and the plot is one of the best like stories in a gacha game, but here we go. Anyway, the best place to start is this moment here. The point right before Rimuru starts to put his plan into action. Normally, he would give a warning that he was about to attack, but since they attacked first, such courtesies were no Ambush longer needed. Them. It allowed him to kick things off with the deployment of a large-scale anti-magic area. A mm -hmm. massive barrier 30 miles in diameter, fully covering the entirety of Pharmacy's army. It only extended 10 feet up though, so while definitely noticeable to everyone within, no one, including Rosin, thought much of it. Ramen. Reason being that an anti-magic barrier didn't really affect them. Yes, it did prevent the use of offensive magic and tele- But they, humans, you know, they don't really use magic, they use, like, arts. ...portation, but for the mages of Pharmus, that was never their focus. No. Pharmus's magicians were trained to prioritize defensive magic. Oh. Only after if never they mind. had the opportunity would they ever do more and provide strengthening and support spells. They were all magics which enhanced a person's body, which for the most part was largely impervious to jamming. This- What? Anti-magic barrier, but defensive magic is fine because it's support utility. These kind of buffs can bypass the anti-magic barrier? Interesting. Person's body, which for the most part was largely impervious to jamming. This made it so having no offensive magic meant nothing since their main purpose was ultimately unaffected. Protect the crystal. It's why they paid no mind to the anti-magic area and simply carried on as if nothing was happening. They were also supported by the protective effects of lesion magic, which in short Legion. put the army on notice against all sorts of magic elements, 
What? It was this defensive radar that was standard practice for just about every military. A sort of early warning system developed mainly to defend against things like nuclear magic. N nuclear magic? What the fuck? Okay, so Legion magic, pretty much another sort of defensive type where it's more like a radar to prevent big shit from going on? Mainly to defend against things like nuclear magic. Nuclear magic. Since these were devastating attacks capable of being cast from distance. Disintegrate? Is disintegrate a nuclear magic? I never really understood the differences of different types of magic here. I just thought like disintegrate is one of the strongest magics that I've ever seen before. Every army needed a way of detecting them. If they didn't and they were unfortunately hit, the resulting impact would be strong enough to change the tide of any battle. Huh. So, in a world where the size of an army didn't mean much, defending against magic meant everything. It made it so every military marched while keeping a close eye on the magic elements present at any distance. Okay. This was of course no different for Farmus, since the enemy they were dealing with was, after all, a large number of magicborn. It had led them to keep a stiff guard up against every magic. This is where Rimuru's genius starts to come into play, since his new magic- Yeah, this is not magic, right? It went undetected, so... Basically, the family's people. <laughs> it's good to see, you know, Baldi again. I actually like Baldi. It's un it's kind of unfair what happened to him, but I remember all the atrocities, you know, happened in season two, so maybe he deserves it. Maybe the soul's still around and Diablo hasn't collected. But like, they were basically using Legion magic. You know what we said right now. Modern warfare is not really about the sheer military size, but just devastating magic that could wipe out a nation. So Legion magic radar detecting, just being careful. But Rimuru was like, nah. This is not magic, this is fucking science. New magic made all such defense measures useless. It found a literal hole in the way these barriers worked and made it so his own magic could pass through that hole. Okay, hold up. Come Again? into play since his new magic made all such defense measures useless. It's still a magic. My interpretation was this is like science, light beam, solar beam, fucking reflected off the lenses, but keep going. It found a literal hole in the way these barriers worked and okay. made it so his own magic could pass through that hole. To give a bit more context, barriers in this world simply functioned by blocking the flow of magicules. Since aspectual magic worked by intervening with the laws of physics through magicules, all one had to do to negate it was simply- Remove the magicules in the area, then you can no longer use it. So the barrier, right, there's no magicules within this pyramid shape. ...world simply functioned by blocking the flow of magicules. Since aspectual magic worked by intervening with the laws of physics through magicules, all one had to do to negate it was simply block those magicules. Okay. Prevent the magicules from entering and the magic will disperse right along with it. That being the case, unless- so, prevent the magicule from entering and there will be no magic. My understanding was when there is a barrier, you're encapsulated in the barrier, magicules are somehow disappearing, but it sounds like you put a barrier up, you put like a box over an area. Yeah, there might be magicules in there, but I guess it dies off later on and no other magicules can go into that encapsulated space. Prevent the magicules from entering and the magic will disperse right along with it. Okay. That being the case, Unless the magic itself was stronger than the effects of the barrier, the magic wouldn't be able to apply its effects beyond the barrier. If the magic is stronger than the barrier, then you can- what? ...self was stronger than the effects of the barrier, the magic wouldn't be able to apply its effects beyond the barrier. Okay. It was a core- So you could do it beyond the barrier though, if the magic was stronger than the barrier? Sounds like this barrier has like a really high durability, I'm not sure. ...or principle that was pretty much the same for elemental magic too. Since elemental magic intervened with physics through the power of spirits, all one needed to do to negate it was put up a barrier supported by a stronger spirit. Think of it like an arm wrestling match between elementals. Okay. A test of strength in which the stronger prevailed. So, this was- <laughs> Just, okay, whenever it's with elementals, just stronger spirit, better. It's, it's just that simple. Between elementals. A test of strength in which the stronger prevailed. So, this was the way it worked with pretty much every magic. All you had to do was determine the principle behind which it operated, then implement something that could neutralize it. So, with that being exactly what Pharmus was doing, standard magic wasn't going to work at all against them. They had too many layers of barriers protecting mm. them against it. It was like a very multi-layer barrier. You need to be able to even be stronger than the barrier, but then there's like extra layers, so it's harder. So, Megiddo, though, just penetrated all that. 
And I thought again it was science, and maybe it still is science, but keep going. How then was Rimuru able to bypass all that? Light. Well, that was with his new magic. A special type we like to refer to as physics magic because the output of its- No, oh, shut the fuck up. So it is just physics. It's, it's called magic, right? But it's just- Keep going. Stems directly from the laws of physics. Not the magical manipulation of it like how a spectral and elemental magic do, but rather a pure scientific application of it. This in turn makes the attack contain zero magicules and allow- That's the part. That's the part, right? The distinction here is Megiddo has each beam, zero magicules. You're not even contesting, like, what are you blocking off? These multi-layer barriers ain't gonna do shit if the physics magic has no magicules present in the magic itself, therefore we penetrate. How's it to pass through barriers like they weren't even there to begin with? It was a little something Rimuru came up with after his encounters with Charybdis and Hinata. Now, how could you defend against Megiddo? A huge magnifying glass. A mirror. <laughs> that would, you know, a mirror barrier, right? If they figured out how to do a mirror barrier, then suddenly the Megiddo would get reflected outwards, right? That and his analysis of control magic, which helped him understand how the triggering of magic worked. Mirrors or block the sun, right? Because the sun is huge too, right? <laughs> How about suns? I don't think putting sunscreen on is gonna really <laughs> defend against the <laughs> the high beams of Megiddo. But blocking out the sun, yeah, you can't use Megiddo at night, right? Because there is this physics involved using the sunlight and reflecting that. But you could also fend against that using mirrors and other things that reflect the light as well. Great Sage figured out all the smaller details, but the concept of an attack consisting of pure physical energy was for the most part Rimuru's. As for how it worked, well, the short version is that it reflected the sun into thousands of little laser beams. Mm -hmm. That was the end result, but the process getting there was a bit more complicated. And not only that, I hear in the light novel or the manga, Megiddo was extremely fucked up. Like, it was borderline torture. It was torture, I heard. In the anime, right, they all got, tss, 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 everyone's head just got pierced, like lethal attacks, right? But I hear Rimuru intensely went for limbs and made these motherfuckers suffer. Complicated. So first, thousands of water elementals are summoned, then shaped into droplets, water then elementals. each strategically positioned all around him. Just over a dozen are then shaped into the convex lenses we see here, mainly for the purpose of gathering sunlight. Those rays of light are then concentrated into the thinnest possible beams you can imagine, then refracted down towards the mirror-like droplets below. It's at this point that all the light is focused through a single point, condensed even further than channeled towards its target, Solar beam. resulting in a pencil-thin beam of sunlight exceeding several thousand degrees Celsius. So this was quite the devastating attack, only made stronger by the short time it took to set up, along with the shockingly minimal energy required to cast it. It's such an efficient attack. There truly was little to no setup. It happened so quickly. No incantation, no nothing. It just Megiddo and Hype Song plays. It penetrates the fucking barriers because, again, it has no magicules in it. Wonder when we're gonna see Megiddo again. With the sun providing most- What if we never see Megiddo again, and this is the last time? Eh. I guess then it makes it super special and we can see something, some other attack in the future. ...to the energy behind its power, all Rimuru needed to do was recreate the lenses each time one was vaporized. A simple process of gathering water vapor and maintaining the water elementals. That's it. All in all, rebuilding a lens took less than 30 seconds, so launching a volley of airstrikes was very much feasible. He just needed to continuously gather water, then adjust his aim a bit. Aiming wasn't even that difficult either, since Magic Sense identified every soldier perfectly. It was nothing more than child's aimbot. play to adjust the droplets and have them reflect the beams to where each soldier was most vulnerable. Fucking aimbot! In fact, while death did come to each and every person equally, some were tormented longer than others. Yeah! Rimuru was pretty eager to add to the chaos, so in order to make them despair Talk about even more, Talk about the torture. What did Rimuru do? Why did they not show that in the anime? Because the anime is trying to portray Rimuru as just like funny, cute little blob. Every now and then he'd deliberately aim at someone's arm, leg, or torso. <laughs> he didn't kill them or put them out of their misery, but instead let them scream to make things more gruesome. <laughs> just 
Just fuck you in specific. Like how Petra's eyes got gouged out. My headcanon besides Petra's eyes being like a valuable jewel or something is. They just said fuck you in spe specific. No reason. It's just you. It's your unlucky day. Yep, you, you're gonna be made fun of right now. I'm gonna cut off your limbs. You're gonna cry and everyone else is gonna get more terrified off of it. He made it so that terror was a core part of the process. <laughs> so, this was Rimuru's magic Megiddo, and it was a new magic which took the sun's energy, channeled it, refracted it, then unleashed it. Now, was there any planning or, like, like how did he figure out Megiddo was even a thing? Because I doubt that he just showed up and realized, you know what? I think I'm just gonna channel water elements and then gather the sun lens, sunlight and, you know, reflect it with these lenses and create a fucking insane and like non magical magic that surpasses the barriers it sounds like there was a lot of setup right was it in the light novel is there like lore and backstory because that's right cut it cut it this was mentioned when um it was like inspired right it was inspired by those attacks as well it was inspired Hina, Hina an efficient aoe spell that dished out destruction and waves the first flash of light killed over Less Rimuru, more Great Sage, inspiration off of Hinata and Karibudis, right? For a thousand, then the next a whole nother thousand. In an instant, panic was spread across the battlefield. No one had any idea what was happening, and of the ones who did eventually come to realize it, they would either beg for mercy or fall into panic. The once confident knight- Where's the other dude? Remember the knight leader, the knight captain that ran the charge? He was so confident, he was like, I will get out there and solve this, immediately steps out of the tent, Dead. Beg for mercy or fall into panic. The once competent knights of Pharmus were now broken. The manga actually highlights the perspective of one of these knights, and the <laughs> oh way boy. it's done is surprisingly emotional. Okay. It's its own side story focusing on him. A knight who's also the lone father of these two children. Oh, stop it! It's a single dad! With their kids asking, is God real? Because if God is real, why did mom die? Oh my god. Oh my. <laughs> We're gonna kill him too. And then the kids are like, what about the kids? At least kill the kids too so that they can fucking go to heaven with daddy. It'd be, I want honestly, I think it'd be more cruel to just kill the dad and let the kids suffer in this world, in this falling nation, dude. Like, oh my god. Children. The initial premise builds upon the question of, is God real? To which we find out the knight doesn't think so. Well, I mean, angels are real. I'm gonna assume God is real in this world. Right? Like, if the angels exist, then the god also exists? Never really thought about that. I mean, demons exist, angels exist, demon lords exist, god. Voice of the world is god? God luminous? Nah, luminous role-playing! Lumi lu lu luminous fucking role-playing as god! No! That's, that's like a fucking... Pig calling himself a demon lord. Sure, by title. Are you an actual fucking demon though? No? You just, you just call yourself that. I don't know. To him, no god would be cruel enough to take his kids' mother away from them. Fast forward now to the day of the massacre. Voice of the world is like the messenger of god. Or maybe there is no god and it's just a simulation. And the voice of the world is just global chat. <laughs> System command, just like global chat, is voice of the world, and there is no god, this is just a simulation, yeah? Well, in that sense, then who created the simulation is the god, right? It's, it's a very too deep for me abstract way of thinking. Friend, though the knight doesn't agree with Pharmacy's motivations, he still fights because he has to. It was all he could do in order to protect his family. So, he neither fought for God nor the kingdom, since from what he could tell, he the promises kids. of both were empty. There was no true purpose behind the speech their king Bro. gave, and the sermon from their archbishop had zero meaning either. No, the only reason this man fought was for his family. It did- <laughs> Fast and Furious me. I low-key wanna watch Fast and Furious tonight. I need to understand what the point of this fucking meme is. I always see- this is not Dwayne The Rock Johnson. No, no, no. This no. is the only reason this man it, fought for it. was for his family. Family. This is Vince. Not Vince Vaughn. No, no, no. That dude's fucking W. Vin Diesel. That's right. Vin Diesel. The family meme I just saw all over the place. I'm like, what? What am I missing out on? It's funny. Your name is fucking Vin. <laughs> Maybe I'll watch Fast and Furious tonight just to get on the memes. It didn't matter whether he agreed with the majority or not, since for him and the people that mattered most in his world. This was all necessary. 
It was a morally gray area highlighted by the rookie knight he was in charge of. Although the rookie found issue with what the majority fought for, Trash the knight made it clear it was easiest to just turn a blind eye to it. Man, this knight should have just been adopted into our fucking tensor of family, man. Straight up, just... <sighs> and he probably didn't get tortured in specific by Rimuru. Wouldn't it be fucked up? I don't know what's gonna happen, but Rimuru was picking specific people to torture. So, like, was he picked on? It was then that the first wave of light started to Ooh. hit, and in the process, slaughtered everyone around him. Moments later would come his turn, oh, but- Oh, come on! A shoulder that you could've just killed his heart! Oh no! Instantly like all the others. A hit to the chest would knock him and his pendant over, You're leaving him struggling up, to reach for the only memento he had of his children. It was a peculiar act that somehow attracted the attention of Rimuru. What the this fuck? This would lead him to fly over and- Oh shit, Rimuru actually descended down? Oh my god, please show mercy. Investigate the pendant himself, revealing his full form to the knight laying in front of him. So, the knight, now confronted by this harbinger of death, could do nothing but beg and plea for the sake of his family. This is... insane! This is adding a level of depth and complexity that I would have never imagined in Tensura. Because the anime adaptation, again, it's just all fun, right? It's all just fun and giggles, bro. Yeah, sometimes bad shit happens. Like, she owned Gobuto. Everyone fucking died. It was sad. And we were angry. And we got a revenge. But, like... Fuck, I wish the anime adaptation was more dark and gruesome like this. Akin to how ReZero is all fucking suffering and torture. And it, it, it really delves into the psychology and, like, what these rulers are all about. Rimuru... We don't get to see any of that. It's just this... Guy that just gets bailed out by, by fucking Raphael and everything is fine and we're having fun, but like a different element like this, maybe it would throw the theme of the anime and what's been portraying since season one, right? Because since season one, we never really talked about too deep shit like this. There was some stuff with Guild. It was very emotional. Yeah, 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 yeah. But like not to this fucking level of suffering that I'm seeing in the manga. I wish, I wish that the anime showed this, but it might like throw a lot of people off of like, oh my God. Yo, this is not the cute slime anime that I signed up for. If there was one last thing that he could possibly do for them, it was to repent for the sins he and his fellow knights committed and hope that that would be enough to spare the rest of the kingdom. Poor guy. Reason being that, despite the mask Rimuru was wearing, the knight could tell underneath was a tension tighter than anything. He knew that if the demon in front of him wanted to, he could very easily go after his family and everyone else. And remember, right? Not just for this night guy. What is happening with Rimuru right now? Shion is dead, bro. Gobzo is dead, bro. A lot of people have been slaughtered while we were away. And we got backstabbed by fucking Yuki and the Eastern Merchant, bro. So, like, it makes sense why he's being like this, right? It's just, I wish they showed this in the anime so that Rimuru could be more of a complex character rather than this this aloof leader who is so cute and sometimes pull out the ponytail and you guys just spam wood you know i, I wish the dark side of tensura showed up more too he could very easily go after his family and everyone else it was contrary to this knight's expectations though that rimuru would instead do the unthinkable no oh? he would give the knight back his pendant <gasps> mercy whisper calmly into his ear then put him out of his misery albeit reluctantly <laughs> Well, you still hit him intensely in the fucking shoulder. But at the end, he listened to the whims of the fallen knight, gave the pendant back, whispered something, and maybe any news will tell us what he whispered, but maybe he said, your kids are following you as soon as you die. I will burn down every village. You have incurred the wrath of the newest demon lord. I will make sure your children suffer even more. <laughs> what did he say? This changed the knight's perspective completely because while the demonic wings made him think otherwise, okay. the face Rimuru revealed along with the words he spoke both indicated quite the opposite. They provided absolute peace to a man right before death. Alright, wow, how merciful. You know, Rimuru's angelic side gave this man such a peaceful death and he was fine. <laughs> Who shut the fucking beam? This changed his very perspective on the world too, since while before he believed God not to be real, standing before- Oh! The question of is God real? 
Oh, and then he's like, this must be God. For him now was a God. Huh. It was a benevolent God he wished he could have told his children about, but unfortunately would have to settle on knowing they'd remain unharmed. So, this to me adds quite a bit of layers to Remuru's massacre. It does! And they cut this shit out! It's like, the... I don't know, it's just like, the... Of all, I, I don't know, the more I think about Rimuru as a character, the more I realize how just flat he is. Flat as in, we never really get to think about what he's thinking, everything just happens out in the way he does. Shit just works out, everyone's just having fun, there's no deep development, there's no deep failures. Well, you could say that this is the development, right? The Shion shit had happened, of course, but like, compared to some of the other animes, I just feel like Rimuru is just kind of static flat even though he has growth here and there it is not overtly shown like i guess in re-zero and maybe i shouldn't even be comparing it's not the same type of show right but but the light novel shows this side right the source material shows this side i wish i got this shit in the anime but the anime has a separate direction obviously that they're going with so it is what it is since not only does it give one example of it didn't happen in the light novel you tell me this is manga. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, I take it back. This is manga exclusive. So who? Why did they do this with the manga? Like, why did they decide to just go dark and gritty with the manga and treat it so much more seriously compared to the light novel? Hmm. Is the manga cut? The the author. I don't know. I, I guess whoever is, you know, drawing the manga got some acceptance from the author of you know, Tensor and says, can we, you know, delve more in the dark gritty sides here since the light novel doesn't really do it much? And we're like, sure, go ahead. I don't know. The likely many who had their own reasons to be there, it also showed how Rimuru didn't go unaffected by it. Although it was subtle, to say the deaths of so many didn't weigh on him wouldn't be accurate. It was just a necessary action to protect the people in his world. That's right. The exact same reason that this knight was here. Exactly right. He fighting for the kids, and who are we fighting for? We fighting for a goddamn goblins that got slaughtered. Now, to switch back to the absolute destruction of it all, a lot can be said about just how minuscule Rimuru made them look. Battle-hardened mercenaries met the same fate as grunts, so despite their being famed fighters and world-renowned champions, each and every champions. one met an inglorious end just like everyone else. Yeah. The Temple Knights quickly reacted and cast multi-layer barrier, but no amount of training Not could gonna prepare do anything. them for this. Sure, their composure was certainly impressive, but impressive was all it was as a single beam of light killed all of them. <laughs> It was as if the person attacking waited for them to activate their barriers, then cut them down after just to show them how useless it was. Oh, that's fucked up. They got hyped up. Quickly, quickly, we gotta cast their barriers. And then the barriers up. Okay, now I will pierce you after you cast the barrier to make you feel even more hopeless. Feel more terror. The noble knights were granted life the longest since in an effort to seek out any escape that- And honestly, this terror plays into Merciless, right? Which is the ability where if the enemy has given up the resolve to fight, then you get their souls. And that's how we got the 20,000 souls or something like that. And that skill, Diablo has a similar skill where it's a little bit different, right? Where it's, it's the same concept of like giving up and then now it's just like, <laughs> your soul's fucking mine. That they could. They unsurprisingly began to attack each other. It was an ugly display of crazed madness Rimuru permitted- They attacked each other?! ...to continue. Razen's personal apprentices could only accept their helplessness too, but what pained them more than not being able to cast magic was the fact that they had no idea what magic was killing them. <laughs> that was the best part. This was the funniest part. Because this motherfucker was the knight's commander that was always like, Oh, the glorious Falmius knights are raiding, you know, ten, you know, fucking, uh, what's it called? Jura Tempest, they're evil monsters. I hated this motherfucker, bro. And he talked all that shit. He's like, don't worry. <laughs> I, the knight's commander, will go out there and bring this demon lord down. And so like, Ching! immediately dead. I had no idea what <laughs> magic was killing them. They were simply forced to die guessing. As students, all they wanted to do was know, but in the end, Rimuru wouldn't let them. So, it didn't matter who it was, because everyone got to experience their powerlessness equally. Now, it was by the end that Rimuru had actually gotten quite good at aiming, and he'd even figured out just how powerful Megiddo really was. You see, Rosin. with only a slight time lag between when the sun is channeled and when it's released, 
Rimuru calculated he could fire it from 6,000 miles away and still hit it. Why this specific nation? Sorry, my uh, geopolitics geography is garbage. What country is this? Why is Anyu specifically firing from the United States to this specific country? Does anyone know what's... This is Greece? Why Greece? Why is he saying fuck Greece right now? <laughs> This target in only milliseconds. It was a minute delay far faster than any- <laughs> What was that? Is that a joke? It's just a distance? It's just the closest thing numerically that matched- Greece is catching strays for no reason. It's a 6,000 miles away. I mean, what about this country above? Y you, could f you could round it up. You could have picked any- All right, fuck Greece in specific for no reason, I guess. In only milliseconds. It was a minute delay far faster than any human could possibly react to. Of course, he couldn't do all this without the help of Great Sage, but the computations were never something he was planning to do anyway. In any case, it was when Remuru had finally descended that oh. the destruction he saw caused him to falter quickly. Albeit very brief, he did consider that perhaps maybe he went a bit overboard. Nah, more, now, more! The confrontation with the king was pretty much the same, minus a whole bunch of excuses that pissed Rimuru off even more. It led him to shoot off the king's leg too, Ooh. leaving him maimed for the second time. Rimuru did cauterize the wound with dark flame, but it That's was only right. out of necessity. This fucking king, Edomaris, should I respect him for this? He showed up and says, how dare you? Who do you think I am, right? He tried to pull rank on us. He was like, after everyone got slaughtered, this dude had the balls after crying his ass out to be like, I'm the king. How dare you do this, right? But maybe it takes some level of, I don't know, respect to actually stand up against Rimuru here rather than step down. Of excuses that pissed Rimuru off even more. It led him to shoot off the king's leg too, leaving him maimed for the second time. Rimuru did cauterize the wound with dark flame, but it was only out of necessity to keep the king alive. He had no other reason than that to do anything else for him. This brings us now to Merciless, yeah. which aside from the effects OP. we saw in the anime, does have a few others that are actually quite brutal. Like, we know Merciless lets Rimuru choose whether the survivors live or die, but mm -hmm. what you may not know is that that choice remains forever. Even if he let them go- What? The moment someone gives up their will, you can obviously take it or not, but it's forever. That's crazy. So anyone, if they, for a second, well, Merciless has to be activated. It's, Merciless is not an always, and Merciless doesn't even exist anymore, right? It got sacrificed to, I think, create Belzebub or something. But like, think about this. Is this just like a all-time passive? Like, it's always active. It's not a manual thing. It's an always passive where... As if, if they just give up in front of you, they, they, in, they submit, you have control over their life forever. And you don't even have to actually fucking use the skill. It's just... It, it, it's part of Bilzebub now as a sub skill, but like, it's just... 24-7 passive. 24-7 passive, always active. Don't even fucking manually have to say it. This is crazy. Go when sometime later they decided to plan revenge. Merc I don't think it's passive though. Because he did have to actually say Merciless. I don't know. If it was 24-7 passive, that, that's, that's insane. Merciless could take their soul whenever he wanted. The instant they were deemed an enemy by Rimuru, Merciless's effects became inescapable. This even worked for the people who fled the battle at the beginning, since no matter how far they'd gotten away, the fact they were <laughs> the identified range. as an enemy at the beginning of the battle made it so Merciless could kill them too. What the fuck? The range... Oh my god, bro. Oh my god, bro. This is fucking crazy. I'm just starting to realize how even more broken this shit is. There were truly no survivors from this incident. Just the king, Rayheim, and Rosin. And... I kind of like Rayheim. <laughs> I don't know. He really corrected his behavior in Season 3. He was a very devout follower of Diablo afterwards. And then he got set up to fail <laughs> by the luminaries. I, I don't know, I feel, I feel like he had a little bit of a redemption, man. Rayheim and Rosin. So, that was the full detail behind Rimuru's Massacre. Alright. A show of power mostly necessary, but also just the slightest bit self-fulfilling. For me, I think it was just as much for revenge as it was to revive everyone. Yeah. Either way, a message both. was sent loud and clear, and it solidified Rimuru's lasting position in the world. But yeah, that's pretty much what I wanted.
That's a fantastic summary of a recap of a scene that I already knew, but didn't actually know more details of. So one of the things that I didn't know, because I always knew that this was some sort of light refraction, right? And that the barriers were being penetrated because this was not the same level of magic. But it's actually physics magic. And it's that even though it is magic, it's lack of magicules that lets you, you know, penetrate the multi-layer barriers. And then on top of that, you know, in the manga, Rimuru intentionally aim for non-lethal injuries to terrorize people. This other dad, the single dad, oh my god, this part would have been fucking beautiful and amazing to see in the anime adaptation, but again, it seems like the anime is going more of like a vanilla route where it's more just fun and happy times rather than really delving into the fucked up nature of what isekai can really be. That shit was really impactful though. And then what else? The true nature of Merciless, right? The true nature of Merciless and how it's like a forever yes or no thing and the range doesn't matter. Truly insane. But thank you, Mr. Andy News, for another great explanation of Tensor Cut content. Here's the video. Go sub to his channel if you haven't. And I'll see you guys on the next one.